Hi guys, Mr. Pulley here with History of Western Civilization for Fieldcrest High School. Looking at the medieval time period and the Crusades, this is the Middle Ages as it's also called, sometimes the early part of that referred to as the Dark Ages. I'm going to make two videos, one on feudalism during the medieval time period and the second one on the Crusades. So let's start off with feudalism during the Middle Evil or Middle Ages. Starting here with, first of all, what is feudalism? This is a system of decentralized organization of defense and governance, okay, for defense and government. I got it so far. Decentralized, however, that's going to be important, okay? This is provided by establishing personal relationships among nobles through ceremonial acts. These acts are referred to as homage or fealty, and this is a ceremonial process taking place in front of other people. Okay, public displays. These personal relationships then create a hierarchy of the lord who in, on top and then the vassal, which is referred to as vassalage, through which mutual obligations are established. These are, the lord grants the, his vassal support in the form of a fief, which is usually a manor where land with servants and other things involved, and also protection. While the vassal gives to his lord military service, and his loyalty. And these create a feudal relationship thing called the feudal pyramid, which we'll look at in a few moments. Okay, first of all, let's look at the lives here of our nobles, and their lives are, well, the quality of their life, let's just say, is exaggerated in the movies and the things you've heard. This isn't everything's all great at the palace, everything's all nice and, uh, you know, wonderful. This is a place where the, the castles are really actually kind of squalid places, not nice places you would want to live. And this is because these are drafty, they are dark, we've got small windows for defensive purposes and, and stone walls, which are cold in the winter. We have open fires for heat, that smoke comes off for that. We've got fires and torches for lamps or, you know, burning oil for, for lighting. All very dark, not so nice. This castle here, actually, this is a castle in Scotland called Dunatar Castle. Um, I like to refer to it as the Mel Gibson Castle, and the reason for that is Mel Gibson filmed his version of the play Hamlet here at this castle. And the real William Wallace, the character Mel Gibson plays in Braveheart, actually laid siege to this castle. Laid siege to the castle. And they were on his side. Then he stopped. Okay, so our lords and vassals live in the castle up here on the hill because that's good for defensive purposes. Try running up that hill just running up it, let alone try running up it with 60 pounds of armor on, plus your shield and your sword and your spear and all that other good stuff. Okay, now, The kings don't have absolute power in feudalism. Their power is sort of granted to them by the nobles, you know, and then so they've got to give that back to the nobles in order to get, you know, protection for them. They can't afford the cost of raising an army, so they give up a lot of their powers to the nobles in order to have them provide military service for them. Now the nobles, the vassal, uh, they agree to serve the king if they retain power in their local territory, that fief that they're given. Um, and they owe service to the king, so many days of military service per year. They also have to provide protection for their people and their territory, and for that they're going to collect taxes from them. Lots and lots of taxes. Okay, others in medieval society sort of some people say they don't really fit in here because they set up their own sort of society uh, with the Pope and all the way down to the uh, uh, clergy, down to the uh, lay people uh, in the congregation. Uh, these are the clergy. Okay, they are oftentimes recruited from the nobility. And the reason for that is these are often later sons who are higher class, possibly hopefully educated people, morally upstanding and better than the poor peasants. And we hope that, you know, if I'm the fourth son, I'm not going to become king, but maybe I can have a nice gig as a bishop. And along with this comes, you know, power and influence and stature and prestige. Um, and sometimes these guys are more interested in that than the actual spiritual aspects. Uh, I'm not sure that's always the case, but uh, I'm not sure appointing a 15-year-old as a bishop is actually a good call either. Okay, the fact the idea of celibacy comes from this time period because uh, the fear was that if these guys could get married, which they weren't allowed to do, but if they had kids, if I'm the bishop and I have a son, I want him to be the bishop when I'm done, and so to prevent this from becoming hereditary, we make this celibate. 
Okay, the others in the medieval life are, of course, our peasants out toiling in the fields, always working. Hey, look, there's our heavy plow and the holler, uh, the collar harness. This is, must be a uh, later medieval time period here. Uh, our peasants, we've got the serfs who work the land. They're tied to the manor, so to speak, and the fact that they can't leave, do anything without the Lord's permission. Um, they live basically in poverty. They're paying taxes for everything. They're paying for their right to live there and the protection he gives them. They're paying taxes for the land that they get to use for themselves by giving a portion of their harvest. They also have to work the Lord's land. Uh, if they use his mill to grind their wheat to make flour, they got to give him a percentage of that. If they catch any fish, hunting, game, anything, got it, he gets a percentage. Okay, taxes again everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Now, not all peasants are serfs, but by the latter part of the medieval time period, about 80% of them actually are. And some other kind of peasants might be actually townspeople who run small shops or inns. These folks are generally self-reliant in terms of taking care of themselves and their food and stuff, buying it from farmers and, and, and even the serfs. On the other hand, when it comes time of invasion, they're going to go run to the local lord trying to look for some protection. So let's in this wrap this up here with a look at our feudal pyramid here with the king on the top and our clergy then trying to claim the top spot. So actually these two would be fighting, not literally fighting, but trying to, you know, say I'm the more important person because I'm the guy who provides perfect protection. No, I'm the most important person because I'm the guy who ensures your life in the next world. We have all types of nobles all the way down to our knights, and that's the, the sort of the nobility part of that at the tip of the feudal pyramid. Then we have some shopkeepers and merchants who are a smaller segment at the bottom. The biggest groups by far are the peasants and the serfs at the bottom upon which everything is built. Peasants and serfs, the folks who do all the work, always seeming to be on the bottom. Well, that's a quick look at feudalism for history of Western civilization. hope that uh, clears a few things up for you. And I'll be back with a video on the Crusades.